Hello, we're here this morning at the South Bank Centre, Queen Elizabeth Hall, ready for the Benedetti sessions in London. We're going to take you behind the scenes and see why weekends like this are so important for young people. What are you looking forward to about today? Playing as a group with other people. Playing with other people from different places. Everything. Make some friends and to play in the orchestras. So here we are in the hall and everybody's registered and in and we're about to do some warm-ups. We're going to get everyone moving yeah. out their seats, some singing, rhythm work. Basically making sure everyone's awake on this Saturday morning. <laughs> and that, that includes us too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shaking and carry on this warm up thing, so you're gonna need a little bit of space for this. The foundation has got all these sort of opposites things, so it's got like real fun balanced with real focus and lots of energy balanced with calm. And, and we want to try and get all those things across in the music and also in the other stuff that we're doing around the music. So behind us is a general musicianship workshop and this is for children who play an instrument that isn't in the orchestra or just have an interest in music but don't yet play an instrument. And we think it's important for them because it actually helps them themselves to, to you know, um, communicate. I find music actually helps you to communicate, especially if you're shy, which the smaller one is very shy, but she, she comes out in herself with music. Beginners are the ones that I think are looking at everything and being like sponges. <laughs> Absorbing everything. So whatever comes after that or on top of it, intermediates, advanced, ambassadors, tutors, and Nick herself, we and the conductors, we need to really be sure that we are setting a very good example for us to keep going in the way music should go. We weren't sure how it was going to function. There's no rehearsals they had to turn up to, so it's really a case of how much can you hand over that trust to the children and their parents and their teachers and their siblings and their environment. Have you been practicing for the sessions? Yes. yes. How have you been practicing? Um, I've been at home and I've been playing the pieces with the music on the internet. I was lucky to have great teachers. It's brilliant to be part of the next generation of people who are trying to feed that back, uh, giving them what I learnt, but also what I'm still learning. If we can latch on to our own feelings and, and be committed to them as we play, that message is likely to get across. <laughs> The more they ask you, the more you give. And the more you ask them to do, the more they give. It's a constant feedback. So the energy, I think, never ends. I was just rehearsing with the advanced orchestra now. Like The number of really unbelievably strong young people with a, with a whole creative idea of how their future is going to be and how the future of music is going to be. Very uplifting, the whole thing. I think it's the far-reaching nature of it. I, I love that she's gathering a, a team of wonderful musicians and teachers, but also trying to influence the next generation of not just players, but also educators. And I think the way that she's looking at it is capturing the youngsters into thinking about how they might teach as well. This group of people are incredible, like the most warm-hearted, kind-spirited people. And uh, it's, been, it's been a really, really exciting and a really fulfilling experience so far. Every child should be entitled to a broad music education all the way through. It shouldn't just be dependent upon whether the school thinks it's important or whether the parents can pay. All athletes and all dancers always warm up. And it's really important for musicians to do the same. This morning I just took the whole um, of both orchestras through a quick warm-up and some advice about what to, how to sit during um, orchestral rehearsals and how to stretch out after playing. To get children to enjoy music is fundamental to humanity really, isn't it? I mean, we all know the good that music does and if, if, you know, the more children that can be enabled to enjoy quality music, the better. And I'm here in two capacities, really. I'm a musical tutor, and I'm also working on um, various groups with wellness, physical well-being, breathing, that sort of thing. 
So I thought we could all do some breathing together, especially the ones who are about to play, to get us nice and calm, soothed, and ready to make the most beautiful sounds. A lot of, of the kids have never played in a big group. You know, they've maybe only played with a few people at school or something like that. So that collective feeling of putting something together, all the older um, students who obviously can play, quite inspiring for the younger ones. Is there anything that you've learned that you'll take back home with you into your own playing? Yeah, probably about the performance, because when I just saw, saw so many people playing like that, I just automatically started doing it. What's about to happen? We're about to surprise everyone with Shaker Canimaza. A warm welcome to Shaker Canimaza! <laughs> Seca, you've just played to the children in the two orchestras. How was that? It was really inspiring for me. I've always loved music and it's kind of moving seeing other young people at the stage that I was once at, um, really, really enjoying music. So it was a pleasure to play for them. And it's amazing to see their reaction, that they didn't know you were coming. You've obviously been a huge inspiration to them. Without foundations like this, not enough people um, do have the opportunity to have really great music, uh, musical experiences. It will go a long way in terms of changing that, hopefully. And also, not just for the people involved in it, but it will go a long way in terms of inspiring everyone who, who sees it as well. It's about joining together all these amazing music practitioners um, to shout louder and harder and faster about how important music education is and the value of it. I think the main point to all of this is that children have a really positive experience of music making and don't come in feeling really insecure and anxious about being in a new environment and making music with people they don't know. <laughs> feel more confident now you've played with with a big group of people and yes. met new people yeah. Yeah. yeah and how did it feel to be in such a big orchestra it mm. felt amazing <laughs> For those young people to sit with so many others in a mass orchestra is a feeling that can't be described. It's very inspiring to be part of an orchestra like this. I think with Nicola being who she is as well, not only she's amazingly warm and wonderful and generous, but it's inspirational for them to get a chance to play with someone who they know from in the public arena. And she has such personality and charisma, it's a joy. And to bring all these young people together from all different backgrounds makes it really special. And coming here, I guess, as well, South Bank Centre, which means something to the kids, is also really special. I'm sure there'll be loads of learning afterwards as well, that they'll go away and think, you know, in three months' time, oh, I remember that, somebody said that to me, or somebody said that to me. And I think it's, it's like a sort of, um, a kind of adrenaline shot, really, of, of, of music making that hopefully will keep carrying people forward. Obviously, we're being really demanding with actual technicalities of, of, of playing and how to create sound and stuff. We're trying to make sure that all of the values that we're talking about are focused on life lessons more than they are on becoming the next virtuoso.